Hey everyone, welcome to another video here at Prof. Paul B. Today we're going to be looking at creating a use case diagram using Visual Paradigm. And uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be modeling an ATM machine and we're going to be looking at a perform transaction, withdraw cash in particular. And we're going to, what I like about this one, it has the association, the generalization, the includes, and the extends. And it also has a primary actor, which is the client, and the secondary actor, which is the bank. And so what we're going to do is, let's go over to NetBeans right away. I'm doing it in the context of NetBeans. And I created this very simple application. Actually, there's nothing in it. It's just a shell. But I'm going to right-click on it, and I'm going to open Visual Paradigm Professional. And I am going to wait. This can take a little while. It's loading up. Let's, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what we'll be doing is uh, notice we're going to be uh, we have the association and that's uh, the client with the withdraw cash we also have the generalization where the withdraw cash is a specialized uh, is a type of transaction and we also have the includes because in order to perform a transaction uh, we do have to authenticate the user and we also have an extends, uh, so the relationship between the authenticate user and the display help. Remember, extend is for optional or alternate uh, paths within your within your um, with, within your use case. Okay, so we're we're going to take a look at that, and let's go ahead and get started. I, um, I think it's finished loading. Yes, I'm going to go ahead and create it in my project directory I do not need this side open here and what I'm going to do here I'm just going to go uh, to the diagram navigator and I'm going to select new use case diagram and it opened it up down here I'm going to go ahead and let's get a little bit more real estate going here and yeah I'm fine with that and here we go. Okay, so I'm I'm actually going to uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first thing we do is we're going to drag the system over, and we're going to call this ATM. Uh, what did I call it? ATM machine. There we go. Let's try. To, I'll be consistent. ATM machine. Okay, so there is our there's our system, and we can make this a, a little bit bigger. There we go. And now what we're going to do is, maybe I'll make this uh, a little bit wider. Let's go ahead and create our actors. So I'm gonna add one actor, and this is, I'm gonna call this actor client. And I'm gonna create another actor, and this other actor, this is going to be the bank. And now what we're going to do is, we're actually going to, let's take a look. Let's just make sure we're consistent here. So I'm gonna create the withdraw cash use case, and we're gonna, create an association between the client and the withdraw cash. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to drag the my use case into the system because remember this this boundary line here represents our application. Anything outside of our application is going to be outside of this bounded blue box. And let's go ahead and withdraw. And remember use cases typically uh, start with a verb. It's verb noun combination. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. I say I'm going to run out of real estate really quickly. And now we're going to. I'm just making this a little bit bigger. There we go. And now we're going to create the relationship between uh, the client and the withdraw cash. And that's an association. There's a few different ways. I can drag the association or we can actually see this little box here. We can click here and do an association here. And we can type the actor's name. Okay, so here's the client. So now we have this nice association. I'm going to try to make it look a little bit better. There we go. Okay, so we have our client is going to initiate the withdraw cash. So the client here is a primary actor because 
the client is actually initiating a use case. And we're going to, when we get to the bank, we're going to see the bank is actually a secondary actor because it does not initiate the use case. It is required for the fulfillment of the use case, but does not, but does not initiate it. Okay. So now let's go back and take a look. So we did this part. And now what we're going to look at is we're going to create a perform transaction, which is a generalization of withdraw cash. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to drag over a use case. And this is going to be perform transaction. And I'm going to hit enter. And now what we can do is we can actually specify that it is a generalization. And it's a generalization of what? Withdraw cash. Okay, so now we have the withdraw cash is a specialization of the performed transaction use case. So let me just try to make this look a little bit better. Uh, we're not there. We go. Perfect. Okay, so now we have that. Let's go take a look. Let's go take a look at our slides again. So we did that. Now what we're going to do is. Our next step is the include. We're actually going, so first I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create the authentication user, authenticate user, sorry, and then we're going to establish this relationship. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to drag a new, there's more than one way of doing this. I'm going to drag a new user, use case, authenticate, authenticate user. And now I'm going to establish the includes relationship. Oops, and here there. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do a includes. So this we're going to include perform transaction. And we see that we did it the wrong way. <laughs> so we are actually going to, you know, I'll, I'll leave this error in. Uh, so now I'm just to show you, I'm actually going to delete this. I'm just hitting delete and absolutely I want to remove that. And yes, I do. So now let's go ahead. We're going to click on this one and now we're actually going to include and which one are we going to include? We're include authenticate user. And there we go. And here, this little include, you can drag it to make a little, make it look a little bit better. Okay, and you have to get a little bit used to the uh, the UI. It's a little bit, it does take some getting used to. So now we have our authenticate user, and we have that the perform transaction includes the authenticate user. Now if we go ahead and so we did this part. Now we're also going to look at the authenticate user has an extension point of display help. So this is an optional path that that is modeled by using the extends. Remember, it's either optional or alternate. Uh, then we use the extends. So I'm just going to go ahead and do I have a 50 50 chance. <laughs> OK, let's see. What's it called again? It's called display help. There we go. OK, and, then, and like I mentioned in class, it could also be like select select language. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to I'm going to do right here and I'm going to call this one display help. And maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll make it match the diagram just so it is on top. So let's go ahead and let's just get a little bit more. It's not going to be exactly. And we're going to add an extension point and let's go ahead and see. Uh, we're going to add an extension point of display help. Okay. And there we go. Let's make this look a little bit better. And or what we have is we have our, well, let's, let's make this look just a little bit better. We're using up a lot of space. There we go. And make our system a little bit smaller. And now we have the extension. We have the extension point of our display help. Okay. And then now finally, what we're going to do is we are going to simply put the association of the bank, the secondary actor that is involved in the authentication process. Let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to click on here and I'm going to click here and I'll I'm going to associate it to a use case. 
and I'm going to associate it to authenticate user. And I'm going to select that. Apologies, part of it is off the screen. And I'm going to just make it look a little bit better. And there we go. Okay. So there's our diagram. Uh, I just wanted to do a quick video because uh, we didn't have time to, to complete this in class. And uh, well, we, we can actually drag this over to make it look. Let's, let's take a look for the, yeah, perfect. Okay. Okay, so that's it for today's video. And, and what you can do now is actually, you can uh, go to uh, File, you can Save Visual Paradigm Professional Project. And if you want to take a screenshot of this, for example, to, you know, to submit, you could use whatever screen capturing tool you want and, you know, just make a screenshot of it, save it and uh, upload that to Dropbox if you have to. Okay. So thanks for watching. Uh, this is a um, short and sweet video on how to create a UML use case diagram using uh, Visual Paradigm. Thanks for watching and I hope you uh, comment, rate, subscribe and uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.